Hello there, welcome back to the channel, hope you're safe and well. In this video I'll be investigating what effect changing temperature has on the accuracy of your air rifle. So let's roll those titles. So you join me then continuing my voyage of discovery, trying to determine what is uh, fact and what is fiction in regards to some of the stuff that I hear people talking about or uh, I read things uh, about uh, air guns. So um, what better way than to actually test things out for yourself and find out for yourself than uh, believe and uh, take things at face value that others tell you. So um, what we're going to do today then is um, have a look and see what effect the change in temperature has on an air rifle. So what I've done is I've selected a, uh, uh, a Springer and a PCP and I've left them in the cold overnight uh, to get them down to a low temperature. Uh, certainly a temperature possibly I would suggest a lot lower than you would usually shoot them at. Uh, and then after that let them get back to um, normal sort of room temperature and uh, shoot them again and see what the difference is. So let's get on with it shall we? So we're outside in the garden then uh, you'll probably notice see the sky it's a, quite a clear blue sky today. Sun's very bright it's low on the horizon there's a little bit of a breeze but it's still quite cold. The guns have been in a cold environment overnight so let's go and uh, uh, check them and uh, see what the temperatures are. So here are the rifles uh, in my <laughs> uh, workshop then. Um, see, I've left them in, in open bags so that they would uh, cool down. Um, we've got the LGV Springer, brake barrel Springer, and uh, we've got the, uh, the trusty Air Arms S400 PCP. Um, <clears throat> so... There's the thermometer then, you can see, look, 4.9 degrees in here, so say, you know, 5 degrees. What I've done is I've carefully put a thermometer inside the barrel uh, so I don't damage anything. And uh, what's the temperature reading there? Temperature's reading 5 degrees, so, so all the stock and everything, all the metal parts in the guns are around five degrees the same as the uh, the temperature in the room um, so what i'm going to do is in order not to uh, affect the temperature too much i'm going to quickly take each gun out and uh, do five shots over the chrono and then bring it back in here so that it stays cool uh, before we do the shoot some targets so we're all set up with the with a chrono and uh, we're using 8.4 grain exact Diablo pellets for throughout the tests. So let's go and get the first rifle then. That's five shots then. I'm going to do put the gun back so that it stays cold. Go and write these uh, chrono results down, and then we we'll switch around and do the PCP. Right, that's the uh, the Springer done for the cold uh, readings on the chrono. Now we're going to check the uh, PCP, the uh, Air Arms S400. Right, that's five shots with the S400. I'll go and put that back in the in the chiller, and we'll, uh, we'll take a note of the re readings. Got the sun in my eyes a bit. Put the target out. We're going to start with a PCP. Five shot group, uh, 25 yards. I'm going to be uh, putting the crosshairs in the centre of the ball, the red ball, and uh, just see where the pellets go from there.
it's shooting off to to the left, so uh, there's no breeze. So point of aim's changed a little bit from when I shot this gun before. That's four. Last one. That's five. Okay. So it's spring of time. Again, five shots. On the target, aiming at the bullseye. Oh, don't forget to tell it. Probably not a very good shot from me, really, that one, I don't think. Oh. So we can do better. Oh. Going in the same place. So, it's not be too bad. That's free. Four. One more. And that's five. Okay. Well, that's all the cold weather shooting done. So uh, now we need to warm the guns up, get them up to room temperature, uh, and uh, then we'll uh, shoot them again and put them through the chrono again, see the differences. So we're back in familiar surroundings then uh, to do the next set of tests now that the guns have warmed up. Um, I think uh, looking at the thermometer, uh, the room thermometer, we're about 18, uh, just over 18 degrees in here. So let's uh, have a look at the uh, thermometer on the rifle. And you can see we are 18.9 degrees. So near enough 19 degrees temperature on the rifle now, as opposed to five degrees earlier this morning uh, what I did is I haven't rushed uh, warming the guns up I basically just brought them inside uh, say into this uh, into the kitchen where the temperature's just over 18 degrees uh, it was it was a little bit warmer but I think I must have opened the door or something anyway so it's been yeah it's been up at 19 degrees it looks like it's going up so uh, haven't 
sped up the warming. I've let the guns warm up naturally. Uh, so obviously don't want to, uh, you know, don't want to muck around and make the the uh, the metalwork it, uh, contract or expand or whatever too much with uh, extreme temperature changes too quickly. So what we're going to do now then is uh, I'm going to shoot both of these rifles, uh, starting with the Springer and um, through the chronograph like before and sticking them back in their bags between sh uh, between testing uh, to keep them warm and then we'll shoot back out into the garden uh, and shoot the five shot groups on the target again. And on to the PCP then. Picking out as if expecting to cock it. That's why I'm doing the switch between springers and PCP. Okay, so let's do the five shot groups again with the warmed up rifles. See what if, if if there's any difference. So starting with the S400 Still shooting off to the left a little Four. One more. That's five. Well, that looks a pretty good group. Okay, I'm the switch rifles. Try it again with the Springer. Back on the brake barrel then. Five shots, 25 yards. Been me that one probably was me. Let's see how we do with the others. That's two then. Oh, perhaps it was the first one that was off then.
Yeah, I think it might have been that first shot there was a flyer. Right. Oh, well, there you go. That's all the shooting done. So, uh, what we we'll do is collect up all the data and the target, and uh, we'll go and have a look and uh, see if we can come to any conclusions. Here are the results from the chronograph. Then, let's uh, take a look at the PCP first off, then. Top box here, we've got the chrono results at five degrees centigrade or Celsius to be more precise. And in the bottom box at 19 degrees. So that's a 14 degree difference in temperature. What's interesting here is if you have a look at the uh, average power, we've got 732.7 feet per second at five degrees and 762.7 at 19 degrees. So that's an exactly uh, a 30 uh, feet per second difference from the temperature, which is quite significant. So you can see with an average of 10.06, so we can basically say 10 foot pounds there and 10.9 there. We're looking at one near enough one whole foot pounds difference uh, with that 14 degrees change in temperature. Um, which is not to be unexpected because we are talking about a, uh, um, an airfield pressure vessel. And as we know, um, as temperature changes, air expands and contracts. So we would expect there to be quite a difference with, uh, you know, the temperature effect on that pressure vessel, uh, the cylinder that's uh, fitted to your rifle. Um, what is interesting, though, is um, this is no surprise here, the spread and the standard deviation. Um, we've seen this when I've used this rifle in many other videos, uh, that despite it being an unregulated rifle, uh, the consistency in shooting is phenomenal. Uh, but once we reduce the temperature, look, the spread and the standard deviation just expands. It really doesn't seem to like uh, shooting uh, cold air. So... Um, uh, you know, that's 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 interesting to know. So if we move across here to look at the spring rifle then in comparison. Uh, at the cold temperature we had 761.4 and at the warmer temperature 767.3. So that is near enough a six uh, a six foot per second difference, which so six feet per second difference with that temperature drop on the spring rifle, 30 feet per second with that temperature drop on a PCP, which is interesting. Um, but also note here, if we look at the spread and the standard deviation here, not really that significant. I mean, we've basically moved from what you could say is an average of 11 foot pounds uh, down to an average of 10.9. So not a significant effect on uh, the, the power output of the spring rifle with that 14 degree change. Um, and you can see here, you know, uh, even though there's a change, the two changes in temperature, the consistency in the rifle at both of those temperatures is very similar. Standard deviation 2.8, 3.7 there. 7.1 spread, 9.9 .9 spread there. So um, we can probably take from that that springers don't seem to mind so much uh, a change in temperature as PCPs. Um, but we'll have to have a look at the uh, at the results on the target to see if the uh, if that supports that conclusion. So let's have a look at the target then. Here's the target then from uh, all of the shooting. Um, I think one of the things that we can uh, we can note from the outset is if you look at the PCP, um, 
the windage is pretty consistent. Both groups shot an equal position off to the left. So I think we can ignore the windage on there and just consider um, the elevation. And uh, similarly, the targets on the right, uh, the windage there uh, is the same. Both uh, of the groups um, shooting off to the left. Uh, what's interesting there is that uh, on both of those groups, um, there's a little bit of a flyer that's a little bit higher than the rest. Um, so when we come to analyze those, I, I think what we'll probably do is ignore the flyer and just stick with the main group. But um, let's look at the um, let, let's look at the PCP targets uh, specifically to begin with. Then let's start with the uh, uh, the PCP target where the rifle was at what I would consider room temperature. So say sort of 19 degrees. Uh, as you notice here. The uh, the group is smack bang on the elevation line, so although it was off to the left, obviously the zero is a little bit out with regards to windage, but uh, certainly bang on with elevation. Um, if I put my little sizing chart up, you can see there's the 15 mil circle, uh, 10 mil center to center, certainly 10 mil, but if I put the 15 mil up, you can see everything fits easily in. 15 mil I would suggest that's probably sort of about a, a 12 11 11 or 12 mil group there it's difficult to to say with these splatterburst targets because the uh, the yellow uh, paint makes the pellet look a lot bigger than it actually is so it's difficult to tell but I would say that, that easily fits in a 15 mil group um, if I look at that the 10 mil you can see I think we'd be quite happy with that as a uh, as a group in 25 yards with a PCP, certainly in HFT anyway. Moving up to the cold temperature target, then again, let's put our uh, uh, spacer on. If I use my 15 mil circle, you can see there that they all easily go in that 15 mil. Now, what I've done is, if you put that 50, you can you can see that see that there's a definite point of impact drop compared to the first target uh, where the PCB has gone cold. We know that the power has dropped by 30 feet per second, approximately one foot pound. So we would expect a point of impact change. And um, I've measured that from the centre of this 15 mil circle up to the elevation line on the target, the horizontal line. And it's near enough exactly a five millimetre difference in uh, pellet drop so that's quite significant obviously you know as you go further out uh, you know compared to normal temperatures uh, that colder PCP as you as you shoot the further ranges you're going to notice an even more significant pellet drop if you're getting you know five mil at your um, zero range um, so that's something to bear in mind if you're a PCP shooter and you're out on a cold day and you do let your rifle get cold you know, you've got to expect that your point of impact is going to have a significant drop. So moving across to the uh, Springer targets then to compare those because uh, they are they're a lot similar. Uh, we've got a flyer up here and we've got a flyer up here. It's uh, significant that both flyers are higher, which is a bit strange. But if you look at the main groups, the actual groupings pretty similar. Uh, Certainly for um, uh, for windage, as uh, they were both off, which which I would put down to a a zero in error. Um, and elevation wise, um, well, before we talk about elevation, let's look at uh, uh, grouping size. So I've got my fifteen mil circle again, and we're putting that fifteen mil circle there. You can see that all of those four shots easily go in there possibly almost a 10 mil group those four shots almost a, yeah probably about 11 mil uh group there we go down to uh the the lower group in and again look you can see they're all easily in a 15 probably a little bit more than in, uh than in 11 mil there probably near a sort of 12 13 mil um uh, anyway so groups are very similar, 
Uh, and as we've seen from the chrono results, we would expect that because there wasn't a significant difference in the um, in the power output of the gun at the different temperatures. And uh, what I've done is uh, I've actually uh, put these uh, circles over the groups and measured up to the horizontal line on the target to compare the uh, uh, the point of impact. And uh, I'll stick those on now. And um, you can see if we look at the um, at the warm shot first, we're probably looking at around 13 and a half mils from the center of the group up to that horizontal line. And then we compare that to the cold and that's probably about 14 and a half, 14. So probably. I'd, I'd suggest it's probably le less than a you know a millimeter at most uh, difference uh, in the point of impact. Probably less than that, uh, which which is probably supported by the um, the chrono data. So certainly, if you're out shooting with a Springer, uh, it would appear that you don't really need to be that worried about getting it cold. So if you if you take the normal precautions and you're putting it in your um, bag between shots when you're going around a, an HFT course or if you're shooting out in the woods and hunting or whatever, if you keep it in the bag between shots, then uh, you really haven't got to worry about the temperature at all. Because, um, I mean, 14 degrees is quite an extreme in temperature. Uh, and I, I doubt very much whether your rifle is going to experience that extreme from taking it out of the bag, shooting and putting it back in, you're probably going to notice a, a difference in a couple of degrees, but I wouldn't have said 14 degrees. Um, so there you go. That's all good then. Well, that's all I have for this video. Before we go, just a quick disclaimer. These results were obtained using my rifles uh, in the conditions in which I carried out the test. You, uh, and I've interpreted the results as best I can. You might decide to interpret my results differently to me, and you might find different results if you test the same thing with your rifles, okay? That's just to appease the keyboard warriors. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I certainly did. It's a bit, it was a bit of an eye-opener for me. Uh, certainly, I won't worry in future about um, you know, the temperature too much when I'm out with my Springer, so uh, that's all good news. So, yeah, hope you found that interesting and useful. Um, thanks for joining me and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.